today's video, I'm going to show you the best CS2 settings that can actually improve your gameplay experience. I'll break down what each setting does and how it affects your performance so you can make the right choices for your setup. If you're serious about getting smoother FPS and better visibility, this one's for you. So hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and let's jump straight into it. The Gear Up Booster application is a powerful tool designed to help you achieve zero ping and maximum FPS. Download the application for free using the provided link in the description. Select the CS2 game and click the Boost button. This will initiate the network optimization process, selecting the best routing settings for you automatically. Download it now. When it comes to choosing the right aspect ratio and resolution, in CS2 it mostly comes down to what feels best for you, but there are some key points worth considering. A large number of professional players might around 85% prefer using a 4.3 aspect ratio, and about 55% of them specifically go with 1200 8x960 stretched. The main downside to this setup is that it cuts off the sides of your screen, limiting peripheral vision. Now realistically, if an enemy is already on the far edge of your screen, you're probably at a disadvantage anyway, but there are still certain situations where that missing field of view can impact your gameplay. That said, the main reason pros stick with stretched resolutions is simply habit. It's what they're used to. Beyond that, stretched resolutions make player models appear wider, which can make them easier to see and track, especially in close fights. However, there's a flip side. Stretched resolutions can also create the illusion that players are moving faster horizontally, which might throw off your aim or tracking if you're not used to it. That's one of the main reasons I personally prefer 16.9. It feels more natural, especially for tracking targets. Interestingly, even with strong PCs, most pros still avoid using the absolute highest resolution. While you might think this is to gain more FPS and it can help slightly, the real benefit is reducing unnecessary visual clutter, making the environment look cleaner and helping you focus better. So if you're just starting CS2 and coming, from another game, 1920x1080 is a solid baseline to begin with. But if you're looking to experiment and find what gives you a performance edge, don't hesitate to try out stretched resolutions too. It's all about finding what works for your playstyle. Now let's talk about advanced graphics settings. An area that often confuses players, but has a major effect on both gameplay performance and visual clarity. After testing a wide range of setups, I found some consistent results that are worth sharing. First off, V-Sync should always be disabled. It adds input delay, which is terrible for competitive games like CS2. Then there's the Boost Player Contrast option, which sounds promising. While it does slightly enhance visibility by brightening enemies against backgrounds, it also takes a toll on FPS, and the difference is honestly minor. That's why many pros leave it off. I personally keep it on, but again, it's not a Game changer either way. What is crucial in CS2 is not setting your graphics too low. Going overboard can hurt visibility and make it harder to spot enemies. One of the settings that directly affects this is MSAA, multi-sample anti-aliasing. If you're gaming near your monitor's native resolution, you can turn it off to gain FPS without losing much clarity. But if you're using a much lower resolution, switching to CMAA2 is a better compromise, it doesn't hurt performance much and can clean up jagged edges just enough to improve visibility. One of the trickiest and most important settings is global shadow quality. Despite being one of the most demanding options in terms of performance, it's not just a visual choice. It has a direct impact on competitive play. If you set shadows to low, you'll lose shadow rendering completely, which means no more early. Warnings when enemies peek from around corners. At medium, shadows begin to fade out over distance, still not ideal. That's why most professional players prefer keeping it on high or very high to retain crucial gameplay information. Now here's something interesting. There's currently a workaround where you can force shadows to stay on even if you set this option to low by editing specific config files in your Steam user folder. I'll explain how to do that later in the video, but keep in mind that this trick could be patched in future updates. Moving on to model detail and texture filtering, two settings that might seem purely visual, but can influence gameplay and performance. Let's start with model detail. If you've ever seen a strange, almost broken animation when headshotting someone, it's often caused by having this set too low. 
In my testing across two different systems, setting model detail to medium actually gave a small FPS improvement, which is a nice bonus. Plus, it improves visual clarity slightly, which is why many pros choose medium as their default. As for texture filtering, this one might surprise you. By linear filtering, the lowest setting often gives worse FPS than higher settings. After extensive testing, I found that using Anisotropic 16X actually provided more consistent performance and better visual quality. So, unless you're running an ancient system, crank this one up. It helps more than it hurts. Now, shader and particle detail in CS2, smoke and flame effects have been revamped, and I honestly couldn't tell a significant difference between low and high settings. Both shader and particle detail seem to work best when set to low, giving you decent visuals without unnecessary performance cost. Let's talk about ambient occlusion. This setting often confuses people because it's hard to see what it actually does at a glance. But if you look closely, even in the settings menu, you'll notice extra shadowing in certain areas of walls when it's enabled. These subtle shadows do appear in game and can affect how clearly you see enemies depending on the lighting. That's why I recommend setting it to at least medium, it strikes a good balance between visuals and performance. Then there's HDR, high dynamic range, which can feel like it does nothing at first. But many players have noticed graininess or overly washed out colors in CS2, and enabling HDR quality helps smooth out those visuals. It makes the game look cleaner and a lot more polished. Now for two of the more debated options, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, FSR, and NVIDIA Reflex. FSR is AMD's upscaling tech, and whether it helps or hurts largely depends on your resolution and system specs. If you're playing close to native, res like 1080p, enabling FSR on balanced or quality can give you a big FPS boost without sacrificing too much clarity. However, if you're already on a low res like 1200 e 960 enabling FSR, especially on lower quality modes, can make the game look fuzzy and hurt visibility. In that case, you're better off leaving it off or setting it to quality only. The performance. Gain is minimal at that point, and visual clarity is more important. As for NVIDIA Reflex, this one is tricky to benchmark, but most players agree it helps reduce input latency. I personally leave eyed enabled at all times. It doesn't seem to lower FPS, and it can help in fast-paced situations. If you have a powerful system, trying the enabled plus boost option might give you even better results, but for most players, just sticking with enabled is the safest bet. And that wraps up today's video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to drop a like and hit that subscribe button for more CS2 content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.